Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with part 2 of my gaming PC tutorial. Last time we did the prep work, installed the CPU, heatsink and RAM into the motherboard, and got it all set up inside the case. Now it's time to install the graphics card. Here we're using a Radeon 7850. Included is a Molex to 6 pin power adapter which we don't need for this build, a crossfire bridge, a quick start guide for installing the card, a disc with some drivers and software, and finally the graphics card itself. Just like the motherboard, you'll want to be careful with it and handle it by the shroud and PCI bracket, so set it on the box before we get it installed in the case. Take a closer look and you'll see the two fans mounted onto the heatsink, but beyond that it's a pretty straightforward card. Just remove the plastic protectors over the PCI connector as well as your display out and it's all ready. Come over to the case and remove the thumb screw holding the covers in place and then pop them out the back. Then remove the screw above it and pull out the bracket so we have room to install the graphics card. Bring the GPU inside and line it up with the PCI connector on the motherboard, then press it down until it clicks into place. Replace the bracket above the rear slots and screw it into place. Now take two more thumb screws and secure the graphics card in so it isn't going anywhere. That's it, the graphics card is installed. Time to drop in the hard drive, in this case a Western Digital Caviar Blue. Come over to the bottom drive cage and pull out one of the drive rails. Just bend the plastic back a bit and line the four metal pegs inside the corresponding holes in the hard drive. Then, just slide the hard drive back into the case until it clicks into place. The Prodigy makes this incredibly easy. The power supply is up next. Included is a bit of paperwork on the warranty and safety info, the power cable, some electrical ties to tidy up our cabling, and finally the power supply itself and all of the cables. First thing is to remove the four thumb screws holding the bracket in place. Now grab four more screws that came with the case as we need to attach the bracket to the power supply. Line it up so that each of the four screw holes are visible, and then just like the motherboard, screw one corner in first, followed by the opposite corner, and finally the last two screws to make sure it's secure. Like always, go back and tighten each screw once you double check everything is lined up. Now we need to feed the cables into the chassis. First of all, find a 6 pin connector and bring it through on the right side. This will be plugging into the graphics card. Next, find the 8 pin CPU power cable and you should be able to break it into a pair of 4 pin connectors. Pull that through the left side. Now bring the remaining cables through the hole on the left side so we have room to mount the power supply. Pull the loose cables out of the way, making sure nothing is wedged anywhere until it fits flush against the back of the case. Make sure the power supply fan is pointing downward. Just screw the four thumb screws back into the bracket and you've got the power supply installed. Time to get everything wired up. You should see cables with much thicker connectors. These are Molex and really aren't going to be used here except for connecting a fan. Tuck these back in beside the power supply to get them out of the way for now. If you grab the side panel, you'll find all of your front panel connectors along with USB ports. First, grab the large blue cable. This is for USB 3.0 and needs to be plugged into the motherboard with all the rest. Find the light blue connector to the right of the heatsink and plug it in. Thanks to a notch, it only goes in one way. The rest of the cables are a bit more tricky, so keep in mind the little arrows. This means that side is positive, which is important to pay attention to as we connect everything. First, grab the cable labeled HD Audio and connect it to the motherboard behind the graphics card. It might be easier to remove the graphics card if you can't get at it. Now, find the manual for the motherboard and look up the pinout labeled System Panel Connector. This is the easiest way to see where the rest of the cables connect, but be mindful of plugging the positive and negative ends correctly, or else you'll have to go and fix them later. Behind the RAM is where you'll find the connectors. I won't go over each and every one, but they just slide into place like the audio. Take your time and make sure each is inserted correctly. It'll save you a headache later if your power button isn't connected, for example. At this point, you should have everything from the side panel connected. It is a bit tedious, but no big deal, really. Now, find the lead we ran from your power supply labeled PCIe, which should be a 6-pin connector. Plug it into the back of the graphics card. It should click once it's inserted. Next up, find the large 20 plus 4-pin cable from your power supply. This goes to the motherboard. Plug this into the light blue connector behind your RAM, and again, it will click once it's properly connected. Next up, find the cable with the long flat ends. These are SATA, which are what you'll use to power hard drives and optical drives. Thanks to the little notch, these will only go in one way. Attach one to the hard drive. It doesn't click, so make sure you get it inserted fully. This is the same process if you want to use an optical drive in your build, except in a five and a quarter inch bay. Grab the CPU power connector we ran through earlier, and if you haven't yet, break it apart, as this motherboard only needs four pins instead of the full eight. Click it into place, and you've got the CPU powered and ready to go. Now, grab the fan header that's wrapped around the processor heatsink, and plug it into the motherboard beside the CPU power connector. Make sure the wires are out of the way of the fan. You'll also see a 3-pin connector attached to the rear 120mm fan. This connects to the header right beside the SATA ports. Move to the back of the case to find the second 3-pin for the rear fan. Here, you'll need a 3-pin to Molex adapter, which I've got linked in the full build guide. Pull a Molex lead out from beside the power supply and attach the adapter, then tuck it back so it's out of the way. Then, attach the fan to the adapter and you're done here. Find a SATA cable that came with the motherboard. We just need to attach the hard drive now. 
Like the SATA power connectors, these are notched so they're easy to install. Plug your hard drive or SSD into one of the white SATA ports and then the other end into the hard drive. Both ends should click into place. Now that everything is cabled up, it's a good time to double check it's all properly connected and ready to go. Come back to the power supply and plug it into the wall and flip the switch on. Connect your build to a monitor and keyboard and then reach around to the power button and give it a shot. You should see all of the fans in the build begin to spin and after a minute it will post and give you information about your parts on screen. If not, no worries, just power the system off and double check everything is connected. The last step is cable management, which is basically just tidying up your wiring with the electrical ties. I won't go step by step here, but basically just group cables together and tuck them out of the way. Once you're done, close the side panels up. Congratulations, you've built a computer! If you're interested in more, check out part 3 where I go over setting up the BIOS, installing Windows, and doing some performance tests to see how well it performs. Don't forget to hit up that like button and I will catch you guys next time.